What's up? Welcome in Hogue and John's with you 16 days to the NFL draft and John's is nowhere to be found. <laughs> so we had to bring in our guy Herb Howard from It's the Bigs. Herb, thanks so much. I'm excited to have you on today uh, and have you filling in for Johnsy. Hogue, man. Thanks for having me. Always a pleasure talking ball with you, man. I'm glad to be on the show. Shout out to John's big shoes. Can't feel those, but but definitely happy to happy to be on and talk ball with you so close to the draft, man. Thanks for having me. Well, he wouldn't even tell us where he was going. He just said in the mountains somewhere. So hey, hey, he, need, he needs some time him. off, man. Papa John's needs some time off. He got almost a full basketball team over there. Uh, obviously, him and his wife just had the new addition. So shout, shout out to them, man. So I'm glad to get some time away. Papa John's. Dude, we've yeah. been doing this podcast for so long, making fun of how many kids he has, and somehow I've never heard that before. It never <laughs> that that's that's an all time moment right there. Papa John's, that's his name forever now. <laughs> that's great. Uh, all right. So if you're not already, and hopefully you are familiar with Herb, he's the best. He knows football. I, we love talking ball. You know, whether we're doing interviews like this, podcasts like this, or just if we're hanging out at House Hall all the time, Herb is the best. So if you're not already following him and his work, make sure you find him on Twitter at Herb Howard 411. The uh, it, it's it, one of the better follows you're going to have. And I'm excited to have him on today so we can uh, discuss everything because we do this thing at CHGO where it seems like every time I go on vacation or miss a show, they ask you to come in or come on the show. So I don't get to talk to you a lot and uh, at least on the show. So I'm really excited to catch up on really all the things that have happened with the bears over the last couple of months, because it's been, uh, it's been a little bit of a whirlwind and it's only going to get crazier here in the next couple of weeks as well. So plenty to talk yes. about, make sure you are following uh, all of our work and I do need to drop for you that uh, if you didn't already see, The Beast is out on The Athletic. Dane Brugler's incredible draft guy that comes out every year. Uh, is It dropped yesterday. So if you are a subscriber on The Athletic, you have access to it. That alone is worth the price of your athletic subscription. Theathletic.com slash Hogan Johns. Go, go get subscribed right now if you're not already. You'll get a deal there to sign up. You'll get access to the best draft guy that is out there. We were actually supposed to have Dane on today, so you may have seen that on Twitter, but he's a little bit under the weather. So we we will get Dane on either later this week or next week before the draft um, because we are scheduled to have one more conversation with him before the NFL draft. But, you know, Herb's here anyway today, so that's all good. I was actually surprised we were even going to get Dane a day after uh, the beast drop. So anyway, go check it out. I was reading so much of that last night, and you're going to want to make sure you check it out. Also, I have a new mock draft out today. Uh, which Herb informed me right before our show that he's <laughs> sick of mock drafts. So uh, you don't have to check it out, but I, I get it, man. It is it is mock draft fatigue at this point. I don't even like doing them anymore when we get this close to the draft. Mock draft 24.0, 25 points. <laughs> like, oh my God. Like they, they're gonna pick one person at nine and everybody's some everybody's gonna be like, I was right. I told you, I told you I was right. Wait, yeah. Which one which one were you right yeah. when you're eight mock draft when you're 17th mock draft, like which one were you right on? <laughs> well, that's the secret, Herb. You do 32 of them, your your chances of getting it right, you know. See, that's those people that do that do like 18 March Madness brackets, and oh, see, I told you UConn was gonna win in my in my 11th one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, see, that's where you're. You gotta go one. I only go one bracket. Actually, this year Me I did too. zero brackets. That way, I couldn't yeah. be wrong. I just didn't fill one out. Um, <laughs> so. Look, look, I, I the, the one thing I do always say about my mock drafts, and we'll get into this probably a little bit later, is just I know some people do them to try to get picks right. And actually, right. for me, it's more about just trying to relay the information I've learned about players. And instead of like worrying about and it's every evolver for sure. Yeah. And people get like upset. Oh, that guy's not going to be there in the fifth round. Well, nobody really knows, to be honest. And uh, and regardless, just learn about the player that we put in there. So that's kind sure. of the point of my mock drafts. And uh, so that's in there for you. We'll, we'll probably come back to that a little bit later. But Herb, I want to start with just kind of recapping some big moves because I haven't heard uh, all your thoughts on everything. Just I mean, going back to the DJ Moore trade and moving back to nine, what was your initial reaction? Thought it was a good move. Thought it was, had a lot of value in terms of uh, accumulating those future draft picks. Huge piece, obviously, getting DJ Moore back, giving Justin a legitimate, you know, number one target. I thought that was uh, paramount this offseason, something that they absolutely had to do, find a legitimate number one receiver, 
no more projections and trying to hope that, you know, maybe Darnell Mooney is going to be this or maybe Chase Clay Plewell can be a number one receiver. Go out and get a guy who's proven at the NFL level already can be a legitimate number one receiver. Now, I don't know that DJ Moore is, you know, tier one of, of number one receivers, but I do think he's a legitimate number one receiver. And I think that they have a pretty formidable wide receiver room now. If you Anytime you get to push your depth chart down from the top, that's what you want to do. So you can put him at the top and now you can kick – Mooney and Claypool and those guys down EQ, all those guys is pushing down a, 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 a slot. And I think that's a really, really good thing for the wide receiver room. So I thought it was a really good move. Uh, you gotta, you gotta seal the deal now. Like you've made the move, but now you gotta make sure that you take advantage of it. And you do that by, by hitting on these draft picks in, in at nine and in the second round, then obviously going uh, into the, into the you know, next couple of years. So you'll see what that looks like. But uh, I like, I like the move. I like what Ryan Post did in, in, in accumulating those picks and bringing in that number one receiver. Mooney got off to a slow start last year, but really yeah. before he got hurt at the end of the year was starting to come on. And, and if you, you kind of, shorten his season a little bit and look in the middle chunk and the production he put up per game there. It actually got pretty good. So, and that was on his own for the most part. Um, That's right. So, you know, adding DJ Moore, I, I'm still very high on Mooney, even though last year can be looked at as, as a down year for him. I, I just still, I just think that that's still headed in the right direction uh, with all the work we know he puts in, how crafty of a route runner he is. Um, so I think right there at the top two, while they might not have the biggest wide receivers there, those are two really good options um, in, in terms of a top duo. Now, I, I still just don't know what to do with Claypool still. Yeah, <laughs> Where do you yeah, stand on Chase yeah. Claypool? Listen, you gotta you just gotta remain hopeful, right? You already invested a second round pick in him, so you just gotta remain hopeful that you know his his measurables and the his intangibles uh, or his tangibles, I'm sorry, can actually you know translate onto the field. He's got the size, he's got everything you want. Like you see the guy walk past you, like that's a guy I want to throw the ball to, right? Um, so you just gotta hope that that's able to translate onto the field. Obviously, he comes over late in the season, tough situation, new system, new teammates, not a whole lot of elite level talent around him. Not a passing offense that was a well-oiled machine at the time. And so you hope that with a full offseason, getting acclimated, getting some time in with Justin, you get DJ Moore in there, you talk about Mooney, he figures out what his role is going to be in this offense, and then you let those guys get going, and then he should be a dependable, dependable receiver for you. So I, I'm still hopeful on him. I won't say that I'm you know, confident or super optimistic, but I, I, I'd say hopeful that he can be – uh, a really productive wide receiver. He, he can be the guy that does provide you that size that that DJ and Darnell don't. So uh, I'm I'm hopeful on them. Uh, I think the Bears have to be. Like I said, they already invested that second round pick. So just remain hopeful on them. I think that there's still reason to be optimistic about what he can be for the Bears this year. I think what would be great is if they can develop him or scheme him into being a top red zone target. For Justin yeah. Fields yeah. when you know things get tighter in the red zone but this guy the one thing Claypool does have on his resume in the NFL is the ability mm -hmm. to score touchdowns I mean he was no he, he he's not always great you know in the open field but when things get tight he was a reliable option to score touchdowns for the Pittsburgh Steelers and I and I feel like with DJ Moore in the mix with Mooney getting more comfortable in this system with Justin Fields I feel like that should be something that they should be able to scheme whether Claypool is really the type of guy that can get himself open the way you want him to or you mm -hmm. know, living up to the draft capital you gave up. I just feel like you should still be able to scheme that big guy open in those tight spaces to cash in and get get some touchdowns out of him, even if he doesn't put up, you know, 60, 70 catches over the course of the season. No, nah, but if he gives you, you know, 45, 50 of them and, and, and eight of them are touchdowns or just big catches, that's what you want to get from him. And I think that, I think this team could be scary in the red zone. I really do, Hug. You look at what they potentially could do with their double tight end package. You got Cole, you bring in Tunyon, and you talk about Claypool. You're running 6'4", 6'5", 6'5", out there. Like, you got these big guys out there that can be uh, matchup nightmares in the red zone. And so I think that – their red zone package should be healthy. It's a team that, you know, should be able to move the ball between the 20s. Can you close the deal once you get inside? And I think with, with some of the size that they have, they should be able to scheme up some things, like you said, find some matchups, get some of these guys on linebackers, get some of these guys on smaller corners, and just use their sheer size to go up and put the ball in the end zone. Do you think the Bears are better, worse, or about the same at the running back position? About the same. 
I'd say about the same. And I and I say that cumulatively. I don't think that they have any player that's better than David Montgomery, right? I think David Montgomery individually is better than everyone that they have in the room right now. But in terms of the cumulative production, I think they can be just as productive as they have been. And so I think that's ultimately the decision that Ryan Posen and staff was looking at, like not the individual player, right? I, I love David Montgomery as a player, love him as a person. I, I really, really like the dude. But can you replicate his production for less money? And I think they can. And I think so far they have. And they may even add to that room, uh, add to that room in the draft. Yeah, I think they will with 10 draft picks and so many good options, at least in Man. my opinion, with yeah. these running backs this year. Uh, Listen, if Jameer gives, I don't think he's going to be there. But if he's on the board at 53, run up there and turn your card in and draft that dude. Just put him in the backfield with Justin. That is a nightmare, like a nightmare. Yeah, that'd be a lot of fun to watch. Uh, yeah. and, <laughs> and then, you know, second round draft capital. I don't have a problem with that. It. it B. John Robinson might be the second or third best player in this entire draft. And, you know, you could, you could certainly make an argument to take him at nine, but you just know that you don't really want to pay these running backs, mm -hmm. you know, second contract and any first round pick that you're kind of going into it, planning on not paying them their second contract. Like that's just <laughs> hard logic to really. Man, that's real. To, to justify the pick uh, as good as he might be for four years. I mean, that's essentially the situation that the Giants are in with Saquon Barkley, where it's like, well, we have to tag him and then overpay an average quarterback um, yeah. just, just to make it all work. That's not what you want to create, that type of situation. Yeah. No, that's legit. That's legit. He could be that generational back, man. I'm not for paying uh, running backs. And I hate to disrespect the position because you do need it. But again, it's just about the production and can you get it for cheaper? And usually you can, you can find these guys. The bears have routinely found these guys third, fourth, fifth round. And so you can find these guys, but if you're talking about a generational back, then that's one I'm willing to pay. And if you think Bijan is that, and you choose to go for him at nine, I won't be upset about it. I really, I really won't be upset about it. I'm a, I'm in a, alignment with you that I don't know that you're going to then pay for him after year five but if you think that between now and year five you could make a legitimate run of the super bowl and he could be a key piece in that i don't think anybody would be mad if the bears win the super bowl and then don't have their 2023 first round pick come 2028 you know yeah yeah i could see it both ways and and i i think i'd be like you you know on draft night i'd be like man this dude's so good he could come in week one Dangerous. Just think about that. All now, all of a sudden, you got now you got legitimate weapons around Justin Fields if you make it like that. So, uh, and that's what it's all about right now. Even in forget even just winning a Super Bowl in the next few years, which is ideally your goal. But like the goal right now needs to be giving Justin Fields all the help you possibly can in 2023, mm -hmm. just to help him make that leap. So if that's if you make that decision that that's worth putting an elite running back, somebody who's probably going to be in the conversation for offensive rookie of the year from day one uh, yeah. ne next season I in the mix. Like I can't, I can't shit on that move. I'm, I'm, nah. I'm, 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 you, you can look at it down five years down the line and be like, well, I don't know. But I think in the, for what the goal is right now in this year, I still think it would make sense. No, it makes a lot of sense, man. This is a win now league. It's a what have you done for me lately type of league. Uh, you got to get everything you can out of Justin Fields. Ideally, um, you want to win before you have to pay him, right? If Justin Fields is who you think he is, you're eventually going to have to pony up a really, really big check. And if you can win before you have to do that, that's the goal. So is it is it a realistic possibility for the Bears to get a Super Bowl by 2025? I think I think they could. I think they could be a legitimate playoff contender this year. They're not a Super Bowl contender, but I think they could be, you know, on that in the hunt column towards the end of the year when they put the three columns. I think they could be the in the hunt team this year. And then next year, I think they could, you know, be a legitimate threat. And and, and so and the same thing in 25. And so if you can do that before you have to then pay Justin Fields, that's what you want to do. So give them as many weapons as you can while you have the draft capital, while you have the money. Uh, put those things around him in place now. And then if you have to kind of uh, restock uh, with less money because you've paid him come 2026, then so be it. Everybody will be fine if you've got a, a championship already, you know, in your pocket. So uh, do whatever you can for him right now. 
it's nice to get those skill positions, but I know at some point we got to get into, you know, the guys are going to protect these guys and actually let the ball get around the field. Yeah. So what was your, uh, before we get into some of the holes that are still, you know, glaring mm -hmm. on the depth chart, mm -hmm. what, what was your favorite move that wasn't DJ Moore? What was your favorite addition that Ryan Poles made? I loved, I love Tremaine Evans, man. I, I know that's, that's an easy one. Uh, and I'll tell you another one that I really, really like, but I love Tremaine Evans, just what he can bring his size, his length, his ability to play the deep middle of the field like we used to see with Brian Erlacher in this defense. If he's able to be that kind of player, and I think he is, then I, he makes everybody else better, including the guys in front of him, right? We know how much they struggled at the defensive line last year. We haven't necessarily addressed it to the degree that everybody would like it, would have liked for it to be addressed to this point. Uh, but I think that Tremaine Evans is a guy who can make the guys in front of him better and make the guys behind him better. I think he's going to get a lot of tip balls. You got Eddie Jackson that was already returning to his ball hawking ways. A lot of those things are going to be able to turn into turnovers. And I think that just what he brings in terms of his size, his athleticism, his speed and, and his striking ability, not to mention he's 25 years old. Oh, like that dude been how he been in the league six years. That don't even make sense to me. Like he was like, how old were you when you got here, sir? And he's just 25. And so uh, I, I was really impressed with him when we when we met him at Hallis Hall and he came in and talked. Uh, I, I love, love, love that signing. Um, I also like the billing silent, just getting that guy that can that 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 nose tackle that can really stuff the run. We weren't able to do that uh, much last year in terms of being a cons consistently shut down the run. You talk about earning the right to rush the passer. Part of the reason that the Bears were so um, bottom of the league in terms of pass rush and sacks, they didn't really have a whole lot of opportunities to just pin their ears back because people could run the ball at them whenever they wanted to. And so uh, getting that, that, that nose tackle up front that can first, second down, he doesn't offer you much on third down or anything like that, but first, second down, he should be a key, key piece. And again, if even, if he's only a guy that can eat up a center and a guard and let Tremaine Edmonds and TJ Edwards fly around, he's doing his job. So I don't, he's not a guy that's going to look at and say, well, how many tackles did he have? Watch the tape and see whether or not he's been productive and effective. And so I, I really like that signing too, in terms of, of defending the run. That's it's just interesting um, because if there is one weakness maybe to Tremaine Edmonds, who I love too, it's he can sometimes get lost in traffic when he has to play downhill, you know, towards the line of scrimmage. Um, but you know, you, that's where you get those defensive linemen, you get those guys off the linebackers, and he's gonna he's gonna flourish in coverage. I mean, you can make a pretty strong argument the Bears are one more corner away from having one of the better coverage, you know, back seven in the entire entire league Legit. at least in the conversation i mean they 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 might not have you know the all pro at any position but you start looking solid at solid at all of them <laughs> yeah they got two safeties you're now part of that is you're when in saying that you're assuming that kyler gordon's going to make a jump this year and he's probably your you know mostly uh your slot corner again um and the majority of downs, and then you're assuming that Jaquan Brisker makes another leap. But I think that the, both of those things can happen. You got Jalen Johnson playing for a contract, whether he gets that or not before the season. We'll see. Eddie Jackson's back there and hopefully healthier. And now you're talking about adding Tremaine Edmonds in the middle, and like that's really his strength. That size, that length he has to cover the middle of the field, um, that just does wonders for everybody else out there in the secondary. But there's still that who's that other corner? Like who's that yeah. other in, but man, that's another position they could theoretically go with in the top nine in the draft. And you wouldn't, you wouldn't blink too much at it because all of a sudden you make that type of, uh, of move with, with a true top 10 cornerback who can come in and play right away. And that's looking pretty scary in the secondary. Yeah. I think, you know, everybody's kind of fixated on, you know, tackle when the bears are going to go tackle. And I, I get it. Right. And again, we talk about, you know, investing in Justin Fields, but, I don't think the Bears are a right tackle away from the Super Bowl. That's not where they are right now. So they need to accumulate as many good football players as possible and just go with that. And if you get you sitting there at nine and the best player on your board is Devin Witherspoon, then that's who you need to pick and put him out there. And, and then he becomes your corner. You kick Kyler inside. Let Kyler just play inside. He's still a starter for you, no doubt. And you're fine. Now you have a really, really good secondary. I love the way Kyler developed. 
you know, uh, in the second half of the season, he just continued to get better and better. We start to see some of that ball production from him. Jaquan Brisker, I think he was a stud from day one. I think he's just going to continue to ascend and be a really, really good player. I think he could be a perennial Pro Bowl type performer for the Bears going forward. Eddie Jackson had returned to some of his former ways in terms of ball hawking. I've always liked Jalen Johnson. Uh, that could be a really, really good secondary. So if they choose to go that route, again, I'm fine with it. That's just something you just solidifying a, a, a already one of your strengths uh, if, that, if that's the route they choose to go. So I wouldn't be surprised and I certainly wouldn't be upset if that's the route they chose to go with. Uh, again, take the best player available for you. And if, if, if that's a corner that solidifies an already pretty good secondary, it's 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 scary how good this defense can be as you continue to build it. I know they're kind of building it from the back up and usually you want to kind of do it the other way around, in my opinion. But you got your linebacker set. You got a good secondary. Uh, that's not a bad place to be in at all. I also like Jalen Jones. Like I, I like the way he stepped up and played. I know he's an undrafted rookie last year, but I, 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 I like the way that he performed when he got his opportunities. And I thought he showed himself to be uh, uh, ready for the moment. And he continued to get better and better. I like his demeanor just in talking to him. I like where he's at, too, just in terms of being another guy that can compete for the spot. But if you go out and get a top-level guy, I'm cool with it. Yeah, it's, you know, it, what you said about right tackle is really true because, uh, you know, certainly if they draft an offensive tackle at number nine, it's not going to be a surprise to anybody. No one's going to be upset about it. They certainly need help on the offensive line. But we've also seen this this team the last two years under two different general managers go out and get a guy late in the summer mm -hmm. to plug the spot and quite frankly not be the problem let's put it that way i mean jason no. peter certainly was, was not the, the problem two no. years ago they signed him in they signed him in the middle of august okay when he was out fishing somewhere and was, it was supposedly never going to play football again all right and he and played good last, ball for you at 40 years old <laughs> yeah, he was great. Now, he wasn't a fit in the new – once they changed the offense, I get that. But, like, the point is they found a guy in the middle of August to fill that hole. And then last year, they go out and get Riley Reef. And, again, it's not like Riley Reef was outstanding, but he certainly wasn't the problem when we no. were criticizing the offensive line at times. So, there's – I think there's a much higher likelihood of finding an offensive tackle that's sitting out there late after the draft once the dust from the draft settles – other players can be cut like Charles Leno was cut by the Bears a couple of years ago. He was re-signed, not just signed, but re-signed re -signed, by Washington yeah. after that. So there's guys out there. And I, I think there's other positions where you're going to have a harder time finding that type of solution late. I think three technique, three techniques, one of those spots. Like if you don't get that guy, I'm much more concerned about that position. If you don't get that guy in this draft. Yeah, you got to find that guy has to be. The nature of this defense, we know that, that guy has to be an absolute stud, a legitimate difference maker, not just another guy. No disrespect to Justin Jones or any of that, but like you have to have an absolute stud at that position. And I don't know that you find that guy on the street later after the draft. I don't know that you find that guy, you know, fifth, sixth, seventh round, like you like they've been able to hit on at, at the offensive line position. You mentioned Charles Leno's seventh round pick. We saw what Braxton Jones did with 17 starts every single snap last season. So uh, the three tech is something that you're going to have to. Uh, invest in heavily either with money that, that that didn't work out for them in free agency or you're gonna have to do it through the draft and so uh, you're gonna have to do it you know sooner than later at least in, in those first two rounds if you're looking for that type of player so I'm, I'm in agreement with you that's going to be a lot harder to find than than to find a, a plug and play right tackle maybe not an elite right tackle but certainly a serviceable professional right tackle you can find one at a different point other than nine hey if you're like me you hate the hassle of trying to figure out what to wear who has time for that i need clothes that are versatile that i can wear on my shows but also wear when i get home or out to dinner with my wife and that's where Roan comes in because men's closets were due for a radical reinvention and Roan stepped up to the challenge. They have the commuter collection, which is the most comfortable, breathable, and flexible set of products 
known to man. And here's why, because Roan helps you get ready for any occasion with the commuter collection, offering the world's most comfortable pants, dress shirts, quarter zips, polos. You never have to worry about what to wear when you have the Roan commuter collection. The comfortable four-way stretch fabric provides breathability and flexibility that leaves you free to enjoy what life throws your way from your commute to your work or Hey, even 18 holes of golf, which is coming up here, golf season in Chicago. It'll, it'll, it'll be here next week, basically, and then go away for another month, but then, you know, come back all summer, and that'll be nice. It's time to feel confident without the hassle. With Roan's wrinkle release technology, wrinkles disappear as you stretch and wear the products. It's that easy. I have a pair of pants from Roan. I have a shirt that I love to wear. Uh, and it's true. I mean, if they're even slightly wrinkled, you just wear them for a little bit and the wrinkles are gone. The commuter collection can get you through any workday and straight into whatever comes next. Head to roan.com slash Adam and use promo code Adam to save 20% off your entire order. That's 20% off your entire order when you head to roan.com slash Adam. Use code Adam. It's time to find your corner office comfort. Upgrade your closet with Roan and use Adam to save 20% off at Roan.com slash Adam. So how about overall draft philosophy? Just, I mean, are you on board with the things that Ryan Poles, Matt Eberflus talk about, preach the direction? It seems like we're learning more and more about how they go about, you know, filling out this roster. I mean, what are your thoughts there? Yeah, I, I'm on board with it. They seem to have a plan that they are uh, committed to. And I, I just like the, the 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 fact that you have a plan, that you have a direction that you want to go in. I don't have to agree with every single thing you do. It's not for us to agree with. It's not for all the fans to agree with. There's one general manager for the Chicago Bears, and his name is Ryan Poles. And if he has a plan, then execute your plan and don't let any outside noise uh, influence you to do something different or spend where you don't want to spend or invest where you don't want to invest. And he hasn't done that. He seems to be committed to his plan. He's executing it. And I like what they're doing. They're just uh, bringing in good players. Uh, regardless of position or saying, oh, we have this need, we have that need. Y'all got a lot of needs. Oh, we were walking around that locker room last year like, who are these dudes? They brought in a makeshift locker room towards the end of the season, um, makeshift lockers towards the end of the season, just set them in the middle of the locker room because they were bringing in people that nobody knew. Guys walking around introducing themselves like, who are these people? Y'all got a lot of holes on this roster. And so uh, go out and fill them however they see fit. So I, I like what they're doing. Uh, staying committed, finding, trying to bring in the best players available, whether or not they fit this positional need or not. Um, I, I really, really like what they're doing. Uh, they seem to have a plan and they're executing it. They're sticking to it. So that, that's all we can ask for right now. It's, it's, I want to wait until this thing is done, right? You get to that point, like you said, late summer, after the draft, after their undrafted free agents have been signed, um, and, and then after whatever late mid-summer acquisitions that they, they they choose to bring in to, to bolster this roster, then I want to just take a step back and look at, look at it in totality, right? He's painting his picture, and everybody wants to kind of evaluate the picture from, like, the first brush stroke. And it's like, no, like, wait, you don't know what he's painting yet. Like, just wait a minute. Just wait a minute, and then, and then let's just see. And so uh, I, I like what he's doing so far, but I, I'll be very, very excited to be able to kind of step back and look at it in totality and see – what has he put together? Is this a team that can legitimately contend for a playoff spot this year? I think what's what what's interesting about what you just said too is like I, I think back to the draft last year on that Friday with the two second round picks mm -hmm. and the amount of anger that was out there because they drafted two guys in the secondary. And and it was just like you look back at that now, and yeah, you could you could quibble and be you know, certainly George Pickens, Pickens was yeah. what was a conversation and probably will continue to be, but you know, they ended up with DJ Moore. You know, like there, there, there's you just you can't get too. No, I think when you're closer to a Super Bowl, right, yeah. and, and yeah. you and you maybe don't feel a glaring need like three technique by the time training camp starts, that could certainly be something you you have a right to. And certain, by the way, about. you have a right to get upset about whatever the hell you want. You're a fan. I get it. It's all good. But For sure. it's just it, it, I, I'm just supporting your point, Herb, that like this is a process. And to look back on last year, they were just getting started. Like they, it didn't matter what the hell position they drafted. Like they needed everything. And they still need almost everything. Like we've been talking about with all these options at number nine. I think 
mean, you can make an argument for almost every position except quarterback would be crazy at this point because right. you committed to Justin Fields. But beyond that, I mean, we're even talking about at least you and I not being upset if they take a running back in the first right. round, which is kind of crazy to think about, but that's where they're at. Yeah, they got they have that many needs on this team. Just bring in good football players. Bring in good football players, as many of them as you can. And if if, a, if they go wide receiver at nine, if they go offensive line at nine, running back, cornerback, whatever. Like I, I, they're like it's fine if they find an edge rusher or three tech, whatever they whatever they do. The guy just has to be a stud. Now that's fair game too. Whoever he does pick at nine needs to be an immediate contributor and difference maker for this team. And so, you know, by mid season or late season, you aren't seeing it from this kid. Then he's you got every right to be upset with him. I remember, yeah. you know, asking him about the pressure of coming, coming into this off season, as opposed to what it was like coming into last off season, when there was no pressure, there were no expectations. There wasn't all of this money and draft capital and number one pick. And so it was kind of like this easy honeymoon type of thing. Well, that's gone this year. Now everybody expects you to knock this offseason out of the park, and that's kind of been some of the reasons why some people have been um, less than pleased with some of the moves that you've made and not making these big signings on the offensive line or the defensive line. But again, I'm, I'm fine with it. Just look at the whole thing in totality. But once you put this thing together in totality, it still has to look great in terms of what you did this offseason. All right, I want to get to some questions uh, on Twitter that – I think a lot of our listeners were excited you were coming on today, Herb. So uh, we'll fire through Thank these. You. And uh, we'll start with Ryan, who's Rhino Dino 23 on Twitter. I don't know if he's related to Ryan Sandberg or not, but uh, uh, he's it's a simple question. If the Bears, you know, make that pick at number nine and you had to pick between O line and D line, which, which direction would you go? I won't duck the question, but it's the, it depends on the board, right? It yeah. depends on. What what happened before? Let's say, let's is Jalen Carter there? Yeah, let, well, yeah, sure. Let's say Jalen Carter's there and um, Paris Johnson and Skaronsky are there. All three of those I, guys. I take Jalen Carter over all three of the tackles, all four of the tackles now, because now you got uh, Darnell Wright's name has been thrown in there with the other three guys. And so, but if all four tackles and Jalen Carter is there, I'm taking Jalen Carter and I'm doing it for the reasons that we already discussed. You can find a plug and play right tackle later if you're still comfortable with Braxton Jones, which I think they should be right. I think they should be um, uh, cautiously optimistic or reasonably confident that the kid can do it. Right. He's got to get stronger. He's got to anchor. You guys had him on CHGO. He was talking about working on his lower body so that he can anchor and things like that. Uh, he understands what he needs to get better at. And so if you're comfortable with him going to another season uh, development and getting with Coach Morgan, um, then fine. I think you can find another right tackle later. But again, like you just said, you can't find that three tech later, right? And so if, if you think that Jalen Carter is that guy, off the field issues, if you're comfortable with it, pull the trigger on him at nine. So if, if he's there and the tackles are there, I'm going Jalen Carter. That's it. Yeah, we haven't talked about Jalen Carter yet. So you're you're um you're fine with him coming in to the Bears situation. You feel like I, I mean, obviously, I, and I I'm with you. I still think I'm. I, you turn on Jalen Carter's tape, and he is just he's great. I think if the Bears were still picking, you know, top three, I'd be a little little nervous about it. But it's, yeah. you know, if he really does fall, you, you still feel like he's going to be a stud in the NFL. Yeah, I do think he's going to be a stud in the NFL. I'm, 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 I'm concerned that he's probably not going to get past Detroit, and that's a nightmare. Him next to Hutchinson, yeah. like that's just that's scary. Um, but if he is there, I'm, I'm comfortable taking him. Listen, that's you talk about, you know, guys having off the field issues. You look at the Warren Saps of the world. You got some Hall of Famers that have had some issues coming into the draft and reasons why they kind of slipped and fell to where they did. And so uh, you look at his tape, and I know. Um, he didn't show too well at his pro day. And that does concern me even more so than, you know, the tragic incident that happened in terms of them, you know, driving at the high speeds and a couple people losing their lives. More than that, his inability to compartmentalize while he's dealing with some things off the field and still be a professional to show up and perform when it's time to. That's what I was looking for more so than, you know, do we trust him off the field? He's a young kid. I mean, when I was his age, I had a Mustang, and I would drive that thing 
ridiculous speeds, like ridiculous speeds. It, it was, it was, it was crazy. And so you, when you're young, you make mistakes and, and do some of those things. Unfortunately, uh, a couple of people pay for it with their lives, but I was disappointed that he wasn't able to kind of, like I said, compartmentalize that thing and still be, um, uh, on task and show up he showed up overweight and he didn't look good and he couldn't get through the drills and that was more of a concern for me than what actually happened just your inability to put that to the side and still do your work because that's what it's about to be a pro so that concerned me a little bit but again they keep bringing him in they brought him in he was at Hallis hall again was it last week or something mm -hmm. and so clearly they still have some interest in the kid and if you're comfortable with them and you put him in front of Tremaine Edmonds, you got Billings there. Now you talk about the secondary. I think you're in a really, really good spot. So I, I, I would be comfortable taking the kid. I know there are some risks there, but his tape is is too impressive to pass up if he's there at nine. Yeah, for me, it comes down to, to a couple things. And, and one is, uh, look, the, the obvious disadvantage we have in the media trying to cover the draft leading up to it is we don't necessarily – we, we get to see the senior bowl. We get to see the combine. We, we can, for the most part, see what happens at these pro days, but then the information sort of just stops at the beginning of April for the most part, because they go on these 30 visits. They're inside these team facilities. And uh, other than some stuff leaking out here and there, you don't really, cause my, my big question is, okay, it's not a great look when you show up to your pro day and you put on nine pounds, you can't finish the drills. Our friend Pat Finley was there and he was like, yeah, look bad. Like he just looked like he, but then you realize the very next day, his legal situation gets resolved. There's been a lot of stuff going on between combine and that pro day for him just personally um, that I met. Now you'd, you'd love to say, well, this is a big job interview. Shouldn't you be committed to this the whole time? But that's a lot easier said than done when you got this hanging over sure. your head in the uh, in a legal situation to figure out. So for me, it all comes down to what does he look like now? Like, got that behind him. Is he back in the gym working out three times a day or whatever it takes to, you know, show these teams yeah. that he's totally committed to ball? And and if the answer is yes, then, then I think that's the answer to drafting him, quite frankly, because he could be mm. that good. And And so the Bears got their look last week. We don't necessarily know, you know, at this moment w what he looks like. But um, I, I and then the other part of it was something I asked Ryan Poles, Herb, last week when, or uh, I guess two weeks now when we were in Arizona. I, um, you know, I asked him about just the idea of, you know, where this roster's at and sort of insulating a young prospect, whoever it is. I didn't even mm -hmm. bring up Jalen Carter's name, but just. Some locker rooms are better equipped to take a young to absorb kid that, yeah. that maybe needs some growing up to do, which yeah. most of these guys actually do to some extent, and in in sort of insulating them with the with the veterans around them. And I asked him if he thinks that the this locker room's in a better shape now to do that than maybe a year ago, and the answer was basically yes, but that's still risky for you know the Bears to do right now in their situation, maybe a couple years down the line. I don't. I didn't view that as a hard no on Jalen Carter. I just viewed it as kind of an honest answer on the situation. If a player's tape warrants, you know, still taking a dude that that could be a you know potential Hall of Famer, it'll be fascinating to see. But honestly, at this point, I almost feel like it's a moot point because I don't think he drops the nine. Yeah, I don't think he does. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he gets past Detroit. And if if I'm Detroit. You know, I, I I run up there and turn that card in and put that kid next to Hutchinson and and oh, and, and you're set. Like you're set, it's or put annoying. them across. Like you know what I mean? Isn't it annoying how much the Lions are figuring their shit out? I mean, like oh. that they're they just keep adding good players. They're fun. They they're entertaining. Um, you know, I don't know that Dan Campbell's ever gonna go down as like one of the greatest head coaches of all time, but I sure love him. Just he fits the bill for that team right now. He fits the bill for yeah. that team right now. The energy that they're bringing in. You know, they got this presence. They, they're trying to build this swagger. They're tough. They fight hard. And I think, you know, it reflects the attitude of their of, of, of his leadership. And so, man, they, they got Dave Montgomery in there. You know, obviously they got Hudson. And, and I don't think they let Jalen Carter slide if he's there. And, again, that's – that's if your name is Justin Fields, that's not no. good. It's not good. <laughs> Better find ways to block those guys. Um by the way, I dropped the ball off the top of the pod for sure. It is Herb's birthday today. Hey. Happy birthday, Herb. 
<laughs> I appreciate that, Hulk. Yeah. But yeah, it, it is it is my birthday. Shout out to all the Aries out there. I know your dad's birthday is also today. Yeah. Um, so a, a great, a great legendary day. So yeah, I'm 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 happy. I'm feeling good. So I appreciate that. Thank you. What, what do you got planned? Anything special? I, I don't have anything planned. Um, I'm gonna do some things later this month. I'm gonna go to Vegas and 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 you know, get into some mischief or whatever, but, uh, <laughs> but uh, today, not, not a whole lot. I got everybody trying to get me to do this, do that, do this. So we'll just play it by ear. It's a real, real nice day in Chicago. So I'll get out and enjoy it. Yeah, it is nice. Get out there and enjoy the weather. I'm jealous. My, my, my dad, whose birthday is today, he turned 70 today. Yes. Um, he's actually in Minnesota going to the White Sox game and the weather okay. looks, you know, fantastic up there too. So, um, you know, if the White Sox, man. you know, if the White Sox lose on his birthday, that's just a, that's not cool. No, nah, they got to pull it out for him. They yeah. got to pull it out for him. He's up there. It's his birthday. They pulled it out last night. Three run homer. Uh, so they, they should they should get it done today. Yeah. Uh, well, happy birthday, Herb. I meant to mention that off the top. Um, it's all good, man. But we, got, we do have some more questions here. Let's go. And, and um, let's see. I don't know how much you've been following all the top 30 visits. I don't even, you know, have them all in front of me, but one of the questions here from Chicago bears bro on Twitter is have any of the players on the bears top 30 visits surprised you? Um, and on the flip side, any snubs so far that have surprised you, by the way, I want to clarify something like not that there's anything wrong with the question. I wouldn't view it necessarily as a snub. I think the one thing that gets misconstrued sometimes with these 30 visits, a lot of the times you, the guys you bring in are not necessarily guys you love, but guys you have questions on. Mm -hmm. Guys that you either need to recheck the medical or get them in a room because you're concerned about their football IQ. Yeah. You, you know, that's actually more so the case than the other way. I mean, uh, I forget who the prospect was that I want to say Schefter or somebody, or maybe Rapshi tweeted out a prospect the other day that was like, this is rare, but like this guy has no 30 visits. And everybody took it like it was a big problem. And I'm like, oh, he's a can't miss prospect. That actually probably means he's clean. <laughs> yeah. We don't need we don't need to see him. Um, no, nobody that I've been surprised about. And again, it's because they have so many needs. They need to get their eyes on as many people as possible and start to answer as many questions as possible. Another thing you got to factor into these 30 visits is do you think this player is going to be available for you at certain parts of the draft, right? And then and that that's also a part of, of you know who you do and do not bring in. Uh, so I haven't been surprised by any of the people that they've brought in. I think they've brought in all somebody from all the different positions and different spots of the draft. So uh no surprises there and snubs. No, I don't I don't see anybody as being snubbed. Um it's about you know where the bears are drafting and what positions that they're that they're targeting so i don't think that i don't think anybody is like oh i can't believe they didn't bring in this guy i can't believe they didn't even bring in that guy everybody that's been kind of linked to them uh through all of these different mock drafts they've got their eyes or their hands on either at pro days at the combine they brought them in for 30 visits and so uh to your point maybe they've already you know answered the questions that they have on them at the combine at the pro day at tape uh visiting the campuses and things like that so uh at this point you are uh kind of solidifying things that you already know. You've already watched the tape. You've got your area scouts that have been to the schools. Maybe Ryan Poles has already been down there, he and Ian Cunningham. So at this point, you're just kind of solidifying what you already think about the player. So I don't think anybody would be snubbed, and I'm, I'm certainly not surprised by anybody that they have brought in. Uh, this is a fun question. Uh, from I hope I'm saying this correctly. Marifa Asar on Twitter. Which pick at nine would make you want to kick your TV in? <laughs> um... Pick it now would make me want to kick my TV in. I don't really, I don't really have one, man. I know, like, we talk, I've seen some of these, you know, edge rushes and things like that. And outside of, you know, Will Anderson, I don't I don't know that you need to do that. I think you can get some of them late. You talk about uh like BJ Ojolari, you can get that maybe in the second round, something like that. Um, I don't know anything that would make me kick my TV in. I, mean, I don't, they aren't gonna go quarterback. And they aren't going to go like middle linebacker or anything like that. So nothing. Again, we we've, we've run through it. I'm fine if they take Bijan. I'm fine if they take Smith and Jigba. I'm fine if they take Witherspoon. I'm fine if they take you know Paris. I'm fine if they take like. There's so many things that they need to do, and so I, I would. It would have to be such a reach 
for me to be that yeah. upset about what he does that I can't even imagine. But that is a good question, and it's it's a, it's a scary question that I don't even want to think about. <laughs> I have I have one, and okay, and it's in probably not to the level of kicking TVs in or anything, but certainly one I would question. Uh, and and the tough thing about is I actually like this player, but I just think there's too many questions and developmental time needed for him to really make a difference right away. Okay. But that would be Quentin Johnson from mm. TCU mm -hmm. um, because I really like him. I watched way too much TCU football last year for some reason, probably because they were quite profitable on uh, were on a lot. <laughs> <laughs> but, but Quentin Johnson, like he just, and we actually broke down the wide receivers on our CHGO show yesterday. Yeah. And, and so I got into this a little bit, you know, he's just not completely polished. He hasn't run the full route tree. I there's some people have brought up like Kevin White vibes. I don't think that's completely fair because Kevin White. The problem with break, comparing to anybody to Kevin White is Kevin White had the injuries. Like, yeah. you know, I don't, I don't, I don't, I, I, I actually my comp if we're like if we're trying to go with a negative comp on Quentin Johnson was actually, um, and I don't even mean this as like a negative, but Chase Claypool, like Chase Claypool mm. being like the big body guy that sometimes you're just like, there should be more here. What's there going be on? More. Um, and, and that's kind of don't go David Terrell on me. <laughs> <laughs> so that would be one at nine. I would be like, uh, I don't know. No, about I get that. that. I, I, I enjoyed watching him play. Uh, he was obviously productive at TCU, big body guy. I don't love, I don't want that at nine. I don't, I don't want that at, at nine. If he's some, for some reason fell to 53 or if the bears pulled off a trade here and there where they ended up with an early second round pick or a late first rounder and they took him there. I, I, you know, I'd be cool with that, but um, I just think the guys that you'd be passing on to take yeah. him at nine, that's what that's I can't reach. Yeah, I can't justify that. Do you see um, any scenario? I know you just mentioned it, alluded to it, but do you see a scenario where they move back up into, you know, earlier second? Like if, they, if there's a guy that they love and they start to see him slide and he's 40, 41, 42, do you see them pulling the trigger and jumping back up and doing something like that? My my guess um, is that there's probably a few guys that they would probably have on their draft board um, where they're prepared to do that. Remember, mm -hmm. I mean, like this is why they put them in clouds and tears and colors yeah. and all yeah. the things that yeah. they do. <laughs> and if one of those players starts to fall and all of a sudden is in reach, there's a reason why those players are labeled the way they are because that's a player that mm -hmm. they're saying, oh, well, this this guy could be worth a second and a third or fourth, mm -hmm. we, you know, mm -hmm. they could potentially remember they have two fourth round picks because they got the extra pick from uh, the Eagles in the, in the uh, uh, Robert Quinn trade. Robert Quinn. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that, that that's it. I, I don't think it's likely, but certainly I think that there's a scenario that they're discussing in their draft room that that could play out. Yeah. I don't, I don't think it's likely either, but if they do it, I'd be very, very intrigued to see who that player is because it obviously it'll tell you that they absolutely love them, right? They absolutely love whoever it is because it's going against everything else that they're doing right right now in terms of yeah. letting it fall to them and kind of just taking guys as they come. So if they do choose to make a move like that, you know, to be somebody that they absolutely love and they couldn't do without once they see him kind of slide down the draft board. So I would be whoever that player is, I would be excited about his potential coming in because I know how they feel about him. What would be wild that I wouldn't completely rule out, but certainly like if you were to ask me, and this isn't one of the questions we got, but if you were to ask me like, what would be the most shocking thing that happened mm -hmm. in the, for the bears to do, it would be that what if they traded up like a couple spots from nine, like after moving back to nine, getting what they did, what if get in front of Detroit and get Jalen Carter? Yeah, like what if like, seriously, what if then all of a sudden it's like, wow, like now they're, now they're going for it. Um, oh, so again, I don't think that it's gonna. Can you do yeah. that? Again, it, I mean, mm, no, I don't I guess, think they will because based on you know some of the great reporting that's been out there, it it seems to me like polls believes one of his blue players, the the color they label, you know, their top guys will fall to nine because of the quarterback. So I think he's yeah. You got to get Richard and Levis in there. Yeah, I I, I think. My guess is they're banking on 
three of the QBs going ahead of them. Mm-hmm. Maybe not necessarily four. If four go, that's great. But I'm I'm guessing the math there is if three go and Richardson basically does Richardson get picked, you know, in the top eight. If he does, then I think the math, you know, adds up to them getting one of their blue players. But the, what you don't always know is like, what if there really is one guy left and yet there's the clock still on number eight mm. and and now, like, can somebody jump you and take that guy? And now all of a sudden you might have to move up a little bit. You know, th- these are the things that play out on, on draft day that you have to be prepared for. Would you view that as a mistake then? Did you, would you view that as the, the trade being a mistake in terms of you went too far down? Because even going into before the trade, my philosophy was you can only trade back as far as you believe you can yeah. get one of your guys. So if you love – you know, four guys and you think three quarterbacks are going to go, then you can go back to seven. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, Well, maybe because, but I think that's what they did because there's, uh, we know now this, that there was another team later that was trying to move up. And there's been some speculation. I think that that may have been the Titans, um, but there's, we know that there was another team involved from farther back. And, polls didn't feel comfortable moving that far back right so i think that's the approach that they took if something wild happens and they miss out on those guys i don't know if i i I think i would i would then say it's only a failure depending on how you pivot because if that Mm. scenario plays out what if they're still able to trade back okay we lost all those guys what's our next move okay sure someone else is calling let's move back let's add more assets let's you know let's go to plan b um, and if they still work out that where they're able to add another, you know, early second round pick, which would be ideal, and they hit on those picks anyway, then it's not the end of the world. It still works out. Yeah. And I think you gotta have, you know, backup plans for for everything that you want to do. You got I think there are there are enough tackles, and we've talked about the ability to even, you know, fill that hole later on in the process. But you look at like three tech, and if if you know if Jalen Carter is the guy and then he's not there or you choose to move back. Then can you get Kalaja Kansi? Is, is 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 that somebody that you can still target at that spot, or any of these guys that have some of the less than desirable measurables? Right, they're a little too short, or a little too slow, or their arms are a little too, you know, not long enough, and so uh, and because of that, they kind of fall down below a spot where you think, you know, maybe their tape warrants, and then you can get them later and so i i'm with you on that it, it, it would 100 percent depend on how you then pivot after that scenario before i can say mm, you went too far on that track all right last one uh that we're going to address here is from curtis at bear down 3354 any chance the bears make a surprise draft day trade moving an asset like tevin jenkins or jalen johnson yeah, I saw I saw that question uh, pop up somewhere else too. Um, now I guess it was, I guess I probably saw it on Twitter last night um, after you posted. But um, I don't know about that. I, I, like I don't, I don't know about that. I don't know the value of of Tevin Jenkins, right? I think that right. the Bears are you know pleasantly. I won't say surprised, but I think they like what they got out of him at right guard last year. And I think they could still feel good about him at left guard or right guard or whatever they're going to do with, with Nate Davis. But um, I don't know that other teams value him in, in that way that you're going to get so much back in terms of a trade value. Jalen, a little bit different there. But again, you got to have a team that absolutely loves him because he's due for a contract. Right. Yeah. So you're not going to not going to trade for him unless you plan on extending him. He's only got the one year left. So uh, you got to find somebody else who absolutely loves Jalen Johnson enough to leverage uh, some of their draft capital. And even then, what does that draft capital look like? I mean, he's a second. He's a second round pick. Are you talking about getting a second round pick for him? I don't know that you I don't know that somebody gives you a second round pick for him right now. Maybe they will. Uh, but again, you got to find somebody who values him that way enough to give you a second and then sign him to a long term deal. So both of those uh, moves would surprise me again. The Bears, like we were talking about earlier, they just didn't last year. They didn't have a roster full of guys that people wanted. I mean, they got rid of those guys early in the process. Right. And then you had Robert Quinn. But I don't know that they have a whole lot of tradable assets 
at this point. Yeah, I think it'd be too early to trade Jalen Johnson. Could it go yeah. down that road eventually if they feel like they're not going to work out a deal and they're just not seeing eye to eye? Maybe, but you know, he's still not going to probably carry the same value that that Roquan Smith did. Yeah. Um, so yeah. it's yeah, because I saw some cornerback ranking recently. I was surprised. I want to say like Jalen Johnson was around number twenty. Hmm. Um, maybe even later than that. I I don't mm-hmm. remember. I saw it. Well, whatever it was, I was surprised he wasn't higher than he than yeah. he was. But he doesn't quite have the ball production. Um, and with Tevin, yeah, I think there's just too many questions about his his health that would make him too. I'm not saying you can't if you really wanted to flip him for like a maybe a mid to late round pick. I, yeah. I, I I don't know. I just think there's too many questions out there that you're um uh, you got to see you got to give him the opportunity to prove that he can stay healthy and be dependable because what they saw on film last year, when he was that guy, he was pretty damn good at a guard. Yeah. I like, I like what I saw from him. And so I'm, I'm still intrigued about what he can be for them. And I think he still has, I think his greatest value at this point is still on the bears as opposed to in a trade. And so uh, I don't know if the bears are in a position to be casting off uh, O-line talent right now. And so, uh, I'm not done with Tevin Jenkins in terms of you know his potential, so I don't I don't love that move, and I, it's just a lot of a lot of things to work out if you're talking about moving Jalen Johnson. It's intriguing thought, but I don't I don't see either of those things happening. Well, thank you to everybody who dropped in questions. We really appreciate it. Um, this was a fun conversation with Herb Howard today on Hogan Johns. Herb, you got anything you want to plug before you get out of here? What what should we know about what you guys got coming up? Nah, man, I'm 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 all good. I will say shout out to the whole team at the Bigs, and you know we talked about baseball, and you know shout out to Eugene McIntosh and Terrence Tomlin holding down with the Bigs, and shout out to Josh and Drew doing what they're doing with the with the Bulls beat. So uh, just follow us at it's the Bigs, uh, all the professional teams, the sports coverage. So we appreciate that. But other than that, no, I'm good, man. This is a real real good time uh, jumping on here. I'm happy to be on Hog and John. It's always good talking ball with you, Hog. You know that, man. We always have a good time talking ball and talking about different things that the bears need to be thinking about, or we as reporters need to be thinking about. Uh, so it's a fun time, man. It's a, it's a great start to my, my birthday. I appreciate it. Man. Oh, that's awesome. Good to hear. Hopefully, uh, look, everybody needs to be checking out the bigs. You guys do great work and, uh, go hit up Herb on Twitter at Herb Howard, four, one, one, give him a, a birthday shout out. And, um, we'll, uh, I'm sure we'll be talking to you real soon, Herb, looking forward to it. And, uh, maybe we'll catch up after the draft or of course, the next time we're at Hallis hall, uh, you can follow me at Adam Hogue. And, uh, of course on all CHGO.com, the, we do have a new mock draft up today for the bears going defense in the first round. Uh, so check that out. It's also in a newsletter form. If you're subscribed to my newsletter and, uh, John Z, of course, at Adam Johns on Twitter and the athletic dot com slash Hogan Johns where you can get access to the beast. Also, uh, we got Kevin Fishbane coming up on Thursday. He's filling in for Johns on Thursday's episode and he's got, I know he's working on something fun where he solicited mock drafts from fans and he's doing something wild with all that. So go check it out on his Twitter at K Fishbane. You can submit a mock draft, I think to him and he's going to compile them or do something. And we're going to talk about all that coming up on Thursday's episode. So you got that to look forward to. As I really well. love the piece that fish and Johns did. This might be, back, might be a couple weeks back. They did the piece on where the bears are in terms of the, their depth and what needs they still have real, really informative piece. So if you want to go back through, the Athletic can check that out. Fish and Johns did a, a really dope piece on where the Bears are in terms of depth and needs right now. Yeah, that was a good that was good stuff. So uh, it's all up there on the athletic.com slash Hogue and Johns to subscribe. All right, we're out of here. Uh, thanks again to Herb. Happy birthday, my man. And we will talk to everybody else. Appreciate you, my brother.